Hey doc, uh, can you please do a video on testosterone? I've been using a lot of these testosterone replacement clinics opening up, especially here in Florida. Isn't that true? You see the signs all over the side of the road, you know. Well, wait a minute. You wouldn't want to give testosterone to any of the athletes because that would be giving them what? See, that's what I'm saying. You know, these are natural components. I just think it's important that people understand the dangers and misinformation on this subject. Thanks a lot. Hey, Justin. Hey, thanks, man. Well, as with any steroid, you know if you take it, your body quits making it. And this is classic. This is, I, I see this almost every day in our clinic here where someone's been on hormones or steroids. And think about this to the extent of neurotransmitters in meat. And we've talked about this where slaughterhouse meat is full of epinephrine and it's adrenaline. And you know why. The difference between New Zealand slaughterhouses and American slaughterhouses is that they're a slaughterhouse in America. They're a uh, Kevorkian in, uh, in, in New Zealand. So a big difference. And it creates a big difference in how uh, the adrenals work in these animals and what they produce. And so the same with you. If you knew you were going to pass, you're going to fight. And that's going to pump your body full of adrenaline. So... Uh, testosterone and that of course then brings neural that's a neurotransmitter when we eat neurotransmitters i feel this is one big reason that we've lost our adrenals is the high meat eating because it's just you you see it in the steroids and neurotransmitters and, and and hormones and you see it in neurotransmitters so your endocrine glands are funny they don't like you to give what they're given. They like to make it themselves. So this idea that a medical doctor said one time that if you take cortisol, it'll shut down your adrenals, but they'll just go to sleep and they'll wake up someday and they'll be better. Oh, excuse me. Uh, you know, this is the sort of thing. And so testosterone is the same way. If your testosterone... Uh, and here's the thing, and I've talked about testosterone before, and this is true with estrogen as well. These are acidic steroids. They're not of the acid level that, that cell acids are, and I just did a video talking about that, of the burning factors of estrogen versus the burning factors of, let's say, uh, phosphoric acid or carbonic acid, uh, a lot bigger of an acid, a lot harder, and so you can feel the difference in them. However, with that said, it's still an acid. So the problem here, of course, is the adrenal glands. That's where you see the final stages of testosterone, estrogen, and their remedy, progesterone, or their neutralizer. And so when you run low in testosterone, sometimes it's better, because I want you guys to remember this. If you're not filtering in your kidneys, and your adrenals are down, and you're low in testosterone, and you're having sexual problems, and you're pumping testosterone to fix that, you run the risk of creating extreme pr prostatitis. You run the risk of running yourself into prostate cancer because it's acid on top of acid. Even though a minor acid on top of a hot acid, the cell acids, it's still going to burn you. So I've always felt that, in a way, God uh, kind of did this kind of right, in, in the sense that having a weak adrenal gland of course, shuts down the kidneys. Shutting down the kidneys, of course, creates systemic acidosis by way of the lymphatic stagnation that occurs from that. In that process, this happens head to toe, whether it's ovaries, whether it's uterus, whether it's testicles, or whether it's the prostate. And they get it first. They get it before this gets it. And so they're the closest. So that's the, the problem. And so by taking testosterone in a scenario where the adrenals are down not producing it, you can almost surmise that you're not filtering from that. And all of this is going to lead you into extreme prostatitis and, uh, and kidney failure and the whole nine yards. So I would do this. I would look, look at our new male reproductive formula. I designed that so you could take that and still get some male power, but not uh, overheat up the prostate to where you're going to create serious problems and then work on your adrenals to produce its own testosterone at the level you need it for your body and your level of activity and your level of consciousness so really get in there and fix these tissues and get strong with your own testosterone because playing with steroids we is not good and it's not just about uh, athletes and things like this is about what's going to happen to you when you start losing your prostate or ovaries or uterus and those sort of things, you know, uh, not good. 
So go back and do the testosterone thing correctly. The same thing with women. If you run, if you've had a hysterectomy, uh, remember the ovarian estrogen is for the uterus. You have some spillover, but it is a. This is a house. You know, vaginal estrogen goes from the adrenals, systemic estrogen from the adrenals. So you can have a hysterectomy, and that's generally a sign of what? Weak adrenals, because it's a lymphatic problem is why we use to lose the ovaries, why we have ovarian cysts come and going, why we have uterine fibroids, endometriosis, it's why we have uh, uh, testicle problems, it's why we have, uh, uh, we can't get uh, uh, males to do their thing like they should. Uh, all these problems, all these uh, steroid problems, uh, remember, are coming from weak adrenal glands initially. So you got to go back and fix those things, get the kidneys filtering, then there's plenty of incredible herbs to enhance. But you don't use hot herbs to enhance while you're hot. In other words, while you're highly acidic, don't use hot herbs like ginseng and, and uh, some of the male herbs. Uh, yeah, those are real hot herbs. So you want to kind of Stay cool while you clean all this up. Get your adrenals up online. If you're a female, all your female problems are going to melt away. And if you're a male, all your male problems are going to melt away and you're going to be strong. And that's the key. For women who have breasts that are undershaped or what, you're going to see maybe an increase in that. Uh, men who have male problems can see a, a changing of that. It's amazing to see what happens when you make tissue healthy. That's the beauty of it. We're not trying to treat, we're trying to make tissue healthy. And that's the only way you're going to get tissue healthy. If you treat, you're never going to get there and you could hurt yourself immensely. Would, would like to hear you talk about testosterone gel. Long-term use, personality changes in men over 50. I'm seeing extreme touchiness. Uh, defensive behavior, can't handle minor stress. Uh, bad knee, uh, torn ligament, won't heal. Well, you know why? And see, this is a bad thing, guys. You know, and, and they're pushing it right now. It's on billboards. You know, just a little testosterone. It's no different than the ladies' progesterone cream. You know, Dr. Lee's work moved. Uh, I mean, I have to say, in one side of the coin, he at least helped medical doctors realize estrogen is not the good guy. It's the bad guy, but not bad. It's just when you're out of balance with any of these acidic steroids, acidic steroids, you're going to get in trouble. And that's what's happening. And of course, whenever you take any component that a endocrine gland makes, you know what's happening. And how many people, I talked to a beautiful lady this morning where She's still on some cortisol, trying to get off. And what they've done demands adrenals because of that. I mean, long-term use of any of these steroids. And the worst thing about this testosterone gel, so if this your hubby or boyfriend, let them view this video. But guys, let me tell you, in the long run, you're going to lose your prostates and you're going to lose your adrenals. And that's going to lead to a lot of prostatitis, prostate cancers, lower back. You know, you can't inspire more acidosis in a medium that's already highly acidic. And if you're low in testosterone, get people have to get out of this age thinking thing. You've got men. I remember I had a 102 year old man out there one day screaming, Dr. Morris. And I couldn't guess his age. He looked too good. 102, getting married for the fifth time. He's from one of the islands. Man, this guy was virile at, at 102. So what's the difference? And go to the adrenal glands. Go to the adrenal glands. That's where the most of it's gotten. And look at the filtration issues, too, because you got to understand what brings down the prostate, what affects the, tes the testes, what affects the ovaries, what affects the uterus. And we're going back. There's only a bunch of cells and two fluids. Take a guess. You got two chances, pretty good odds, and then you only have how many sides of chemistry? Two. So pretty easy stuff. So understand that testosterone is acidic. It will uh, supplementing it will actually decay your adrenal glands. And when you stop, 
Just pretend you're playing baseball and somebody threw a baseball bat upside your head because that's just how it's going to be. And yes, it affects the mood swings. It affects all of that. Absolutely. Because you're right into the steroids and then the residual kickback to the uh, pituitary could be interesting. But the big issue, if you're low in testosterone, fix your adrenals and prostate. And how you fix your prostate is through that route of adrenal and kidneys and the lymph system. Get rid of that acidosis because get those adrenals producing again and you'll have all the testosterone you need. And the same thing with you ladies, but in balance. Because what you're doing is you're taking high testosterone with no progesterone. And progesterone is its partner. It keeps it in balance so it doesn't burn you too much. It doesn't overstimulate you too much. You have to be careful careful with these type of steroids, even estrogen. Look at all the ladies now in trouble because they were using estrogen replacement programs and all these uh, bioidentical steroids. I love all that kind of crazy thinking when they know damn good and well that it suppresses the gland you're taking. It doesn't matter if it's, it's specially formulated for me. I mean, that's just putrid. I mean, this is still steroids and hormones. You'd never do those. You fix the glands. I mean, for you guys about the glandulars, if you're suggesting, you know, it would be far better to take a glandular than to take a steroid or hormone, let me tell you, because what you get into is big time trouble. So if this is a friend of yours, get them into rebuilding the adrenals and prostate and they'll have all the testosterone they need and on demand. So that, that's really what you want to look at. This supplemental thing is only going to wreck men, but it does show you what's happening to males. Young men can't even, uh, you know, get a resurrection, so to speak. And that's the problem. We have got to get the human body healthy. Make health your focus, guys. Because if you make health your focus, it's, you're, you're going to open all the doors and you're going to open up all the channels. If you're focusing on one thing over another, it's like supplementation or it's like treatment-based thinking. Think health. Don't think treatment. Treatment never cures. Treatment never works, guys. It never works. And most of it leads to nightmare problems in the future. And it's not worth a few things today for a big thing tomorrow. So I'm definitely not in testosterone at all supplementation or estrogen or progesterone. You know, for a while I got in, you know, I'm like everybody else. I, I think I speak from some experience. And I can just tell you that I've used progesterone creams, you know, but if I'm facing a big fibroid, I, you know, I might use a little progesterone cream on the hips. I, I might, you know, just to, just to help balance that, just because it's used as a natural cortisol. But at the same time, you're going to mess with your natural progesterone production. So it is a very, very rare beast to ever see me do anything like that anymore. But I went through that phase. Mm -hmm. I sure did. So many symptoms in this man that fit the descriptions of steroid side effects. Thank you, honey. Now, this lady's smart. And if this is her husband, she's lucky she's got a, uh, he's lucky he's got a woman like this. And if it's her boyfriend, he's still real lucky. So this is, this is a good thing, Sandra. You're really right on point here. Good woman. He's on thyroid supplements too. Uh, okay. So you might have to think about pituitary with this guy. You may be. Just something to think about there, Sandra. It might be affecting the, uh, the prostate and, and adrenals as well. But here you go. Can't f uh, find much on side effects of that. Well, the side effect of that is the same thing as the steroids. You, whenever you take a hormone, even a synthetic, say uh, Synthroid, Levothyroxine, same problems, T3s or even T4 armor, doesn't matter. You're going to lose your thyroid someday when he comes off of that. So you don't see that now, but there's calcitonin produced by the thyroid gland. He's going to lose that. That works in conjunction with PTH, parathyroid, parathormone from the parathyroid in your skeletal and connective tissue systems and, and nerve systems. So uh, you're going to lose that. And then you're going to, you're going to end up losing the thyroid because you notice that they keep, if you've been long-term use of any steroid, unless you're making your body healthier, you'll see the increase of dosages because the glands keep getting weaker. And sometimes medical doctors have you on thyroid supplement when really the problem's in the pituitary. So there's a lot of that going on out there. There's not enough expansive thinking amongst all the paths and definitely not a much nature pass either. So I'm going to beat us all up. We need to stop 
and get simplified and expand and go simplistically and we'll cure 99% of the people. There's always going to be someone you can't save. Always. But they're meant to go on and have fun in their next journey. So you can't judge those things. But for all apathy to sit there and claim these pharmaceuticals are for the best of man, we're trying to save man from diseases. My God, it's delusional thinking. This one place wants me to speak, which I think I will if they want me to, I'm doing a big cancer symposium. And uh, that's what people have to understand. You can't, if you live in the world of diseases, you're trapped in a prison. And a prison you can't get out of if you haven't noticed. Some of you guys are in prisons that they put you into that's so sad, and you're having to struggle to get yourself out of them. You know, and my heart goes out to each and every one of you. I'm right with you. So just, just know that I'm standing over your shoulder watching you and helping you the best I can, okay? But that's why we have to realize we have to go back to what's up? Lifestyle, dietary habits. Come on. That, they, this is the fuel you bring into the car. Dirty fuel, dirty car. Hmm. So I like this. Uh, she's right on. Yep. You, Sandra, you've got it. Tell him to get his diet back in shape, work on the prostate, work on the kidneys and adrenals, get his kidneys filtering, it'll pull the prostate clean, make a healthy prostate, make healthy adrenals, and this man won't have a problem one. Matter of fact, a lady might. 